Hello, welcome. Have a seat, make yourself comfortable. My name is Kurt84328, and I'll be your host for the next few weeks as we explain the 3D Train Studio, also known as 3D Model Bond Studio. I've been a model train enthusiast since the mid-1960s and have found what I consider to be one of the best programs out there for building model railroads and simulating them on a computer. We'll look at the program in detail showing you various aspects and teach you how to use the program to its fullest potential. So hang on and all aboard. One of the first things that you want to do, if you haven't already done so, is to visit the 3D Train Studio website. The address is en.3d-3d m o d e l l b a h n dot d e from the main web page click on download which will bring up the download portion this takes a couple of seconds here you can download the program if you don't yet have it it is a free download and gives you a fast and easy start into model railway planning and simulation. The standard version contains sample layouts and over 5,000 tracks and components. It allows for up to 150 pieces. You can also activate the professional version right from the application. This version runs on Windows from Windows 7 up through Windows 10 and is a 32-bit slash 64-bit program. It does require an internet connection. Click on Start Download. Follow the prompts. And depending upon your internet speed, it can take anywhere between 5 and 10 minutes. The professional version runs 39 euro 95 or approximately $45 in US dollars. Once you have downloaded the program, go ahead and locate where the file was downloaded to. Double click on the installer, follow the prompts, and the program will install. It will ask you which language you want to install in, German or English. We'll choose English, and the installer prompts you with the user license, which you accept, and then go next. It'll ask you if you want to create a desktop short talk desktop shortcut. That's a good idea. The program then unpacks the files that it uses to install, which takes a minute or so, and then it will proceed to install. The first thing that is installed is the default catalog of items that can be used in the 3D Model Train Studio. This takes a minute or so. And then after it finishes with the uh, items that can be used, it proceeds to install the program itself. And then it prompts you to, to launch the 3D Chain Studio and to go to the online manual. The online manual is on the website we've just visited. 
It's known as the Wiki and currently is only available in German, but can be translated to English with the help of Google Translate. And we're going to go ahead and skip that and just start the 3D Train Studio program. Okay, this is the main screen for 3D Train Studio. Up at the top shows if you're logged in and your username. When you register the professional version, you will be given the opportunity and the choice to choose a username on the 3D Train Studio website and also to pick an icon. Down below the gray bar, it shows the 3D Train Studio and the version that I'm currently using, which is the professional version three. Below that, we have three big boxes, new project, my projects, and the community. New project is used to start a new project. My project shows projects that you have begun and done work on and saved. And the community shows layouts that have been built by various members of the 3D Train Studio community. Down below that, we have recent projects, which is actually a listing of the projects that I've been working on. And then next to that, new in the community, which shows the most recent layouts that have been created by the community. We'll go ahead and we'll start with the community over here and show you what we've got in here. This gives you new projects, the layout of the month, which is chosen by the members of the community, small projects, medium projects, large projects, and then experimental projects. From this screen and from almost every other, there's the option of home, which takes you back to the opening screen. My project shows you what you've been working on. And we have projects that I've done. This first one with the little indication here says it's been changed, gives you a menu. This right here shows that it has been shared with the community. We've got one here with again the menu, the settings. And because there's no little figures here, it means it has not been shared. Other projects. Import an existing project. We'll talk about that later. And if you click on one, then you have the option to open that project. We're actually going to go back to the main screen. We're going to start a new project. From the new project menu, you have a choice of three different configurations of panels to work on and some sample projects that have been partially worked on, partially built, which you can open, examine, and you also have the option of playing around with whatever's on there and adding to them. So we'll go ahead and we'll start with the empty, the square. It pulls up the square. And then the gray area that you see surrounding the square is like the workspace. Up at the top, we have a series of items in the menu, a second small menu, and then we have the item itself. If we double click on the square box, the plate, the first thing that comes up is this funny looking thing that we call the gizmo. It's a three-dimensional tool that allows you to move pieces that you've selected around both in the X 
and Y dimensions and also in the Z dimension, which is up and down. Now, if we double click on the square, it shows the name. It's in German, it means bottom plate. You can change that if you want by highlighting and typing in whatever you'd like for that. It also gives you the option to edit it. Now the measurements that I use and that most users use are metric. And if we click edit, it shows the basic shape right here, a box or a rectangle. 1A is the length of the rectangle and 1B is the width of the rectangle. These can be changed if you desire, but we'll leave them the way they are for right now. The next item we'll be looking at is called grid size. The rectangle or the plate is divided into squares. Squares can be anywhere from as high as you want, say 150 centimeters, all the way down to one centimeter. Now, the smaller the grid size, the more intense the demand is on your graphics card. So if you don't have a really good graphics card, you may want to go with something like three, five, or even 10 centimeters. The higher the number, the less detail. The smaller the number, the more detail, but the more demand on the graphics card. Let's talk for just a moment about the keyboard commands for the program. The plus sign highlighted in red zooms the view in. The slash key highlighted in blue above the number pad zooms out. The enter key highlighted in purple zooms in on the highlighted object and centers the view. The arrow keys highlighted in green move the view left, right, up, and down. However, the direction that the view moves is actually backwards from the directions indicated on the arrow keys. You'll get used to it in a few seconds. Other useful keys include the Q in red, which rotates the view counterclockwise, W in blue, which rotates the view clockwise, A in green, which tips the view forward, and Y, which tips the view backwards. Down here, it shows the properties, and it shows properties. This little icon that looks like an upside down Y is the three dimensional tool which tells you where specifically in the work area your, prod, your piece is located. The paint, which allows you to paint, and we'll talk about that later. Mountains and then tunnels. Over here, this thumbtack locks whatever you've selected into the scene or unlocks it. When it's red, it's locked. This eye symbol makes things either visible or invisible. This is a link icon and we'll deal with that a little bit later. And then we have here uh, a little box that is for object variables. We'll talk about variables later. You can turn the gizmo off by going up to view and clicking on view and go down to where it shows show gizmo and uncheck that and the gizmo disappears.
I personally like using the gizmo, so I'm going to turn it back on. Now that we've got the base plate all in place, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start putting some track on it. The track is located under railroad. We have in the catalog, which is this area here, we have new items, we have railroad items, we have scenery, we have street, which is vehicles, streets, and so forth. We have a history of what we've already used. We have buildings, we have air things like planes and so forth, water, which is like boats and various other things, modules, and then extra. We'll go to railroad and click on that. There are actually three choices normally. These two items here have been added to my particular catalog. They won't be in yours, but you can add stuff later, and we'll talk about how to do that later. We're going to go ahead and go to tracks. Various track manufacturers are listed here, all the way over to the last little pit here. These represent various manufacturers of model railroad track, and the sizes range anywhere from Z scale, which is the smallest all the way up to what they call number two or ILM which is a very large scale now we're going to go ahead and we're going to use Gargreaves track it's an O scale so it's fairly large but it's easy enough to work with to start with so we'll double click on that and we have two choices here we have plastic ties and we have wood ties. We'll go ahead and we'll choose wood ties. And now you have four boxes, curved tracks, straight tracks, crossings, and switches. And then we have a single item over here to the side marked 101. 101 is a piece of flexible track which can be used in a number of different ways and we'll show you that in a moment or so. There may be other items listed depending upon what additional items are provided by the manufacturer. We'll go first with curved tracks and it has a listing here of several different curved tracks. Putting your mouse on an item will show you a small image of the track along with the track name, who it was created by, when it was last changed, the date and the time. If we double click, it shows you a larger view, view in three dimensions. You can click on it, move the mouse, which moves the track. Go up, down, left or right, which rotates the track. Here again is the name of the item, the creator and when it was edited. Down here is the actual name of the item in the program. You don't need to worry about that. This slider bar makes the image either smaller or larger and that's just for viewing. And then we have over here day or night. Clicking on this will change it to night. With track, there's not a lot of difference, but other items, it does have a difference. We can jump to the next track, or we can go ahead and close that. We'll go ahead and we'll take this track. We'll drag it up and drop it on the board. And then if we're not sure exactly what type of piece this is, as far as the various types of settings for it, once we've got a piece on the board, we can go over track properties. The name of the track again is listed. This can be changed, particularly if you're laying out lots of pieces and want to note something with various sections of it, you can change the name. The track properties is listed below. Holes and shot or beige is wood and gravel, beige, 
Down here is track bed, which puts a bedding under the track. Or if you take the check mark off, then it shows just the track without the bed. And then right here where it says edit, that starts the track editor. We'll talk more about the track editor later, but by clicking that, it shows the track width, its O gauge, its curved, its hulls and shotter, which is wood and gravel in beige, track bed. It shows the radius in millimeters, and it shows the angle, 45, which means that it is one eighth of a circle. These numbers can be changed, but we'll just leave them as is. But we now know that that's a 45 piece. And we can go ahead and we'll drag up another one. Now up here, where we have this little thing that looks like a railroad track, this button either activates or deactivates the automatic snapping of track together. When the track looks like it's broken, it doesn't automatically hook them up. When you click on it and it joins them together, that automatically joins the tracks together. We'll go ahead and we'll choose Y in the circle thing, the gizmo, and we'll drag this piece up. When we get close, they join together. By clicking in the gray area, it deselects everything that's on the board and tells you select an object for editing its properties. From here, we can go ahead, put the pointer outside the area of the track, click and drag, and it creates a box that will select whatever's within the box. We'll go out here, we'll go over and down, and we've selected both pieces of track. By selecting the Z rotation, the blue circle, putting the pointer on the circle, clicking and dragging, we can rotate the track. We can then move both sections up with the Y, or over if we want to go in the X direction. And so we've placed that approximately where we want it. Let's go ahead and we'll pull a few more sections, and stick them on the board where we'll want to use them a little later. We need to zoom out a little bit, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to click on the slash above the number pad. We'll drag two more pieces into the bottom corners. And then we're pretty well set as far as the curve pieces that we want. When we go down in the bar where it shows the, uh, the tree, we've got models, railroad tracks, the track maker, the type of track from the maker, curve tracks. If we click here, it'll go back to the four boxes. We'll take a straight track by double clicking on it. We'll go down here, we'll drag a straight one in, we'll go up, bring it up near the curved track, and it joins. We'll put another one on next to the long one. As you can see, that track is aimed right off the board. So what we'll do, we'll go ahead and click off that. Now, when you're in the area, when you click in the gray area, you can go ahead and rotate the board and everything on it so that the top rotates towards you with the A key. We'll go up to here, click and drag, and highlight all the track that we've put together so far, and we'll rotate that. And adjust that just a little bit so we can get that nice and lined up. 
Now, there is an easier way or perhaps a different way to rotate what you've selected. That's to go down to the little 3D gizmo here or the little 3D symbol and click on that. That shows the position in X, Y, and Z. And then the rotation of the various pieces. The Z rotation on this is a little off. It should be closer to about 8. So we'll highlight that number and change that to 8 and hit enter. And obviously that's not it. It's not quite there. So let's go a little higher. We'll try 9. Still not quite there. 10. 10 is almost there, but not quite. So let's try 11. Okay, 11's close enough. We'll go ahead and we'll move this track down a little bit. And we'll move it over a little bit. Now, since I clicked outside of the box, all the track deselected. So we'll go ahead and we'll cut, highlight it again. And we'll move it in the X direction a little bit. Now, once you've got a piece down, if you want to add a piece just like the one that you put down last from either end, you can click on that piece and highlight it. Go down to the gear. And we have a few extra options. One of them is to append another track. And that will put one like for the one that's highlighted at the end of it. There it is. And then we'll go ahead and we'll go and take these pieces, drag them up, touch them to the other track. And this one is oriented wrong, as you can see. So we'll grab the Z rotation and we'll rotate it and then move it over with the X. And then up with the Y, back with the X, and up, click, there it goes. Now, sometimes you want to get a new piece. We've got one here, and we'll take this one, and we'll take a short little piece, click it there. If you put your pointer in the little square, white box and click you can drag it just with the mouse just moving the mouse you don't have to use the little arrow things on in the gizmo let's go ahead and put one of those in we'll put another one in on the other side and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to select another type of track we're going to put a switch in and this particular track set does not have any switches. But we can go back to the wood ties, go back to the manufacturer, go to plastic, and we can get some plastic ties. Now, the first time an item is accessed, it goes ahead and it downloads the information from the internet. So we'll go ahead and we'll take a left hand switch. We'll rotate it 180 degrees. Move it over and connect it to the layout. We'll take a right hand switch Rotate it again 180 and then take it and connect it to the track. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to go back to the manufacturer, back to wood, and get a straight track, one that's a little shorter. Now we can go ahead. And if we want to use this piece again, instead of dragging it up, we can highlight it like it is, go up to edit, and 
copy and then edit and paste and that creates a new piece we'll drag this one over to the other side and connect it up there and then we'll go ahead and we'll add the curve pieces onto it This one we're going to have to rotate and then go ahead and move it down and connect it on. Now, sometimes the distance between here and here can't be matched exactly with the standard piece. And that's where the flexible track comes in. Now, a flexible track is track that can be bent, it can be shortened, and it can be stretched. We're going to rotate it. We'll take it, and it's trying to rotate it in a different dimension. It's a little bit below the grade at one end and higher at the other end. We go back to here shows the amount we can hit zero and zero and that will level it so that it's flat on the board drag it down when they make contact we'll get there now we're going to make some changes to this track first thing we're going to do is go over to active track modification click on that and change that to bending flexible track that gives you the option with a flexible track to shrink it or stretch it or bend it so that it isn't straight the option for bending works for all tracks for bending it if you don't quite have things lined up or for raising the track either above or below the base plate so again flexible bending flexible when you are in the right location on the flexible track and let me go ahead and zoom in on this and then we'll go ahead and we'll go down when you're on the right location and have the track selected the track turns green when you're at the right place to actually begin modifying the track we'll click and drag and it'll stretch the track out and when we get to the other end it will connect to the other end and there we go now this track looks a little funny when the rest of it has track bed we can fix that by going down to the properties and click track bed now it's got it now it's highlighted different because it's been selected when we click off of it it's gone and it's like the rest we'll go ahead now and zoom out where the switches are we want to go ahead and add some curved tracks we'll go ahead and use the same ones we had before we'll grab one edit copy edit paste and we'll click in the white box and we'll Go ahead and be, you want to be careful with that because it does, it's easy to mess up and tilt the track. We'll go ahead and we'll set that back to zero. We'll go ahead and make sure we're not touching any of the circles or the lines. Click inside the white box, click. And we grabbed the wrong track, but that's okay. We'll just take this other track and we'll move it up and connect it. And then we'll move this one over to the other side and connect. And then we're going to go ahead and append another track 
to the end of this one just like the one that it had and then over here we'll go ahead and we'll append an, another track as well now because these turnouts or switches had little curves on them to begin with we've got more than a quarter of a circle so these are pointed up a little bit we could either add track in a partial circle to each end to get it level or we can go back and we'll grab another flex track and put on here because it's not straight we'll go up touch it on there it's connected we're going to stretch it again so we go over to active track modification bend the flexible track click on the end when it turns green drag it out bring it down and touch the other track now it bends the track to match the ends so that's useful when you have a piece that you don't quite want to curve exactly or you don't want to figure out exactly how to do it with the track so there we go let's click that again put the track bed in and if we zoom out a little bit you'll see now that we have the track laid for our first layout now let's go ahead and put some railroad cars on it we go down to the bottom click on railroad then go down to track vehicles we can choose either a steam locomotive a diesel locomotive an electric locomotive or we can get a passenger locomotive or a passenger car like a commuter car let's go ahead and we'll go with diesel these are the various diesels that are available we'll scroll over to the end and grab a Union Pacific locomotive we'll drag it up and put it over a track and when we have it positioned right it will go ahead and snap to the track and if we zoom in and then move up with the arrow keys then we can go ahead and we can look at the locomotive from the top from the top click outside of the board use the a key actually in this case we want the y key and now we can see it from a slight angle and see what it looks like railroad cars are automatically sized to the size of the track now let's go back to railroad again and to track vehicles we'll go to freight cars and we'll go to what we call van which is like a closed in track instead of being open we'll go ahead we'll go over to the end of the selections and we'll go ahead and we'll grab a Union Pacific freight car take it up over and up and when we get in the right position it snaps onto the track now cars automatically link to each other so if we just go ahead and take the X and drag the car forward when it gets close enough to the locomotive they connect together let's go ahead and put another one on slightly different color and it was close enough so it linked and then let's go ahead and put a caboose on the end we'll go ahead and add a caboose here we've got a little bit of a train now it shows each of the car names down here at the bottom they can be changed Union Pacific Gelb that's German for yellow brown which is brown and then the locomotive now locomotives have a special screen it's got the name 
It's got a speed thing, which with, has two little arrows to change the speed up or down. And speed is measured in millimeters per second. A drag bar to change it. Uh, you can either arrow up or down or drag the bar. It shows the current speed and it gives you the option to enter the cockpit. Entering the cockpit shows you the view what it would be like if you were sitting in the driver's seat. And there you can see looking out. See the train tracks. You can drag down or to the sides or up. And let's go ahead and we'll set the speed to about 40 millimeters per second. That's kind of slow, but it's good enough for now. And you can see that it's going along the track, going around the curve. If we leave the cockpit and go back to the 3D view, you can see the train moving. Let's go ahead and zoom out. And it turns on the switch there. Switches can be controlled with various devices that are in the program. Push buttons, uh, signals, uh, specialized buttons that are designed to look like the switch that you're using. We'll go ahead and we'll click on the locomotive again. And let's go ahead and turn the speed up a little bit to 76. Now that the train has left this track, we can go ahead and double click on it. And the piece of the switch that's going to be used changes color slightly. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that. Move over. And let me go ahead and change the switch again with the arrow keys. You can see that the turn is lighter colored. And if we go ahead and hit the arrow key again, the straight piece is lighter colored now. So when the train comes to the switch, it should go straight. And as you can see, as it enters that switch, it does go straight. So it's going to go down now to the lower loop. That pretty well takes care of our layout and the first lesson in using 3D Train Studio. I hope you've enjoyed yourself and join me next time and we'll show you a few more tricks and a few more things that you can do. Thank you and have a good day.